Here is the world on water for December 6, and in the last seven days we've had reports on Jetana 7, Edmund Rothschild, winning the Brest Atlantiques race around the Atlantic. Charles Cordarier talks about the race at the finish. Day 2 at the Star Sailors League and the Americans show their form. Brett Perry explains semi-rigid soft wing technology that is now available for cruises and races. We wrapped the recent New South Wales Flying 11 state titles and everybody had a great time. Bob Steele, two times winner of the Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race, explains his future plans and they might not include sailing in the race. Now over to Brest for yesterday's finish of the Round the Atlantic race for 32 metre trimarans. C'est un petit peu plus musclé, mais euh, il n'y a, a pas beaucoup de vent, mais il y a une mauvaise mer. Du vent d'Est euh, en Espagne, et on ressent la houle, du vent d'Est, on ressent cette houle-là de face. Et du coup, euh, bon, on y va mollo parce que le. Le seul truc que je crois qui pourrait ne pas nous faire gagner, ça serait de ne pas finir maintenant. Donc, il euh, faut pas qu'on casse le bateau euh, parce qu'on est impatient d'arriver à Brest. Ça s'est très bien passé, il y a eu des hauts et des bas, ça a été une course super difficile. Et avec Charles, ça, voilà, on a été performant, ça a été top. On s'est battu euh, du début à la fin et euh, voilà, d'avoir nos concurrents loin derrière, on est toujours ravis. On, a, on est euh, sans doute sur le plus beau bateau du monde, le plus rapide au large, ça c'est sûr, avec euh, nos camarades qui nous suivent, mais je crois que celui-là est un, un petit temps en avance et le bateau il est magique, il est juste magique. C'était un peu long. Mais, euh, mais ça s'est très bien passé, ça s'est très bien passé, c'est magique de naviguer sur ce bateau-là. C'est fantastique, c'est une chance extraordinaire. Ça a été une course vraiment tellement difficile avec les bateaux qui en ressortent presque intacts et encore très rapides à la fin. Je pense que le test est réussi. Il commence à se rapprocher cette équipe magique, talentueuse, audacieuse. Voici le trophée de la victoire pour le Maxi Edmond Rothschild. Uh, very happy and very proud for the team. I think uh, we just arrived six months ago with Frank in the team, and they have done a fantastic job since four years. But they had many, many issues because the boat was young, and it's a very complicated boat. Very. Uh, very a lot of innovation first boat to fly offshore and uh, but we knew this boat was a success you knew this boat was a fantastic boat and uh, it was time to prove it and uh, so we are very happy it's uh, four years of work and uh, and uh, of uh, innovation of um, and they dare to they dare to do something new something different and it's a big success i think it's very important for the team and for for our sponsor and uh, it was a long race it was tough sometimes but not 
Actually, the boat is really uh, very nice to sail offshore, very very safe and uh, very fast and very, and easy speed, and uh, it's just a pleasure. So it was, yeah, it, it has been a fight uh, until Cape Town. We had some issue, but uh, but at the end, uh, the way back was a bit long and uh, soft, so it was okay, and we, we are not exhausted. But I think because we also were very well prepared and and because the boat didn't have so much issue, so. We, yeah, we just sail and uh, yeah, sailing on this boat is just pleasure. <laughs> Julie Calberine, on peut lui faire un tonnerre d'applaudissements. Voici le trophée de la victoire pour le maxi Edmond Rothschild. Charles Camas, Charles Caudrelier, pardon, Franck Camas et Yann Rioux. Race 3 got underway in very fresh conditions as the crews battled up the first beat. Kuznirovic and Prada took the lead at Mark 1 and held back the chasing pack on the downwind leg. However, they were usurped by the Italian and German duo Negri and Clean, who had their afterburners on, storming the remaining legs to take the win, ahead of Rohart and Ponzo. Kuznirovic and Prada stole back third on the line for the chasing pack. Race 4 got underway in slightly lighter conditions, the local team of Halawesco and Berger grabbing a great start at the pin. Early on in the first beat, the advantage went to Percy and Ekstrom, who had to hold back the onslaught of attacks from Negri and Clean to claim Race 4. Negri and Clean claimed second, while Pepper and Truche, after a DNF in Race 3, fought hard to take a third in Race 4. Winds built slightly as the fleet lined up for Race 5. The Croatian duo of Stepanovic and Belic took the pin with the fleet stacked up on their hips. Kuznirovic and Prada took an early advantage, but again Negri and Clean in phenomenal form led at Mark 1. Out of nowhere, American duo of Kayard and Trinta stole a march on the fleet, leading at Mark 2, forcing Negri and Clean to the left side. Kayard and Trinta held off the chasing pack to take race 5. Kuznirovic and Prada took second while the young duo of Chiaverini and Weiser snatched third from Negri and Clean on the line. We had a big gust and I just literally such an old pune nowadays. I couldn't pull the main on and we, we did a Chinese jive which is a first for me and a start. Anders went for a swim but he managed to hold on. But yeah, good to bounce back, win a race, we were pleased with that. It's working well uh, because uh, I'm in fire, yeah, I'm focused. We go one by one. It's very difficult, this course uh, is shifting 20 degrees, uh, one side to the other. I'm starting on the committee boat and try to be free to tack if we are on a header or old if I'm on a lift. And then from that on I just play the mark and try to go as a shorter course as possible to the mark. I make it easy and it works. 
Leading after the second day of racing is Negri and Clean on 8 points. Kuznirovic and Prada sit in second on 17 points, while Kayard and Trinta round off the podium in third on 19 points. With the action hotting up, join us for day three from Nassau in the beautiful Bahamas. We're at the CYC, beautiful day. We just had the launch of the uh, Hobart race, the Rolex Sydney Hobart race for this year, 146 entries um, and everybody's around the place including uh, Brett Perry. Now Brett, uh, better known for his sailing abilities and his podcasting. <laughs> podcasting, yeah, that's, that's gaining traction, I can tell you that much. Mate, Bar variety, uh, for those who don't know. <laughs> tell us what you're doing. Well, other than uh, sitting around talking into a microphone with uh, two mates, just uh, been working on my little project here, which is a uh, been doing it for the best part of five years now. Um, so it involves uh, the development of this uh, sports boat, um, which includes uh, this soft wing uh, project that I've been working with. It's the semi-rigid wing by Advanced Wing Systems. Um, so I've really just been focused on that, to be honest. Well, uh, that's pretty interesting because uh, the America's Cup is talking about something similar, isn't it? It certainly is, and uh, amongst us it uh, creates a little bit of a talking point. But uh, look, we're, we're more than happy to be, uh, to be involved in this side of the technology. Um, a little bit of a background is that uh, the, the Advanced Wing System company has been around for 35 years and been R&Ding this for a long, long time, and uh, it's something that not a lot of people know about. Uh, me personally, I've been involved with this particular boat and, the, uh, and the, the system for this boat for five years. So we've been doing a lot of work um, in our own little way. It's been self-funded, um, so you know we don't have all the big boys uh, sort of really getting involved because you know before the cup it was sort of still one of those crazy scientist things. Um, but now it's started, slowly starting to gain traction. Uh, there is definite merit, and uh, that's what we've been hoping for and planning for. First off, tell us about the boat. Well, this is the K8 Sports. Um, so this is a uh, it's a sports boat. It's it's a it's a, still a prototype, uh, if you like. Um, sorry about the mess. I've only just got here after being away for a week. Um, in short, it's a 26 foot uh, trailer sailor, purpose built for the soft wing. So uh, we've done a lot of design work to create the shape, and uh, with the difference in. Uh, with the difference in stability and everything you get with a soft wing, we're able to uh, push a few more parameters with the hull shape. Soft wing, mm. describe that. Well, it's the semi-rigid wing in actual fact, and what it is is a twin uh, membrane system, same as the America's Cup. The, uh, the, the most important thing to, to differentiate us between the America's Cup is our mass rotation system. All soft wings require mass rotation and uh, one of the things that is really important to understand is the semi-rigid wing by, by advanced wing systems actually rotates the rig in the opposite direction to a wing mast which is opposite to the America's Cup and what that does essentially is it helps the uh, helps the mast work with the sail so in other words it pushes the lured membrane into a shape against a solid point at the end of the boom so effectively creates the shape that way. Um, now the difference with that with the America's Cup is they rotate away from the wind effectively tightening the lured membrane so they have to have another system in place to put the shape in. So in terms of the differences between the, the, the two systems that's basically the, the, the glutch of it. Um, the semi-rigid wing um, is a, is a is a product of uh, Greg and Pat Johnston from Perth, uh, 35 years of toiling. It's an amazing story and one that um, I hope people will you know, get to understand over the coming years. So which do you think is the most efficient? I'm not going to say that at this stage because uh, <laughs> I'm not here to create uh, you know, uh, tensions. This system is particularly, uh, particularly light, particularly easy to use, doesn't require a lot of systems to put into place. And that's the whole philosophy of this system is based around practicality, pricing and uh, simplicity. And that's, that's all I can say, that's what it's about. See the full interview on our website at boatson.tv. Welcome to the Middle Harbour 16 foot skiff club, the host for round one of the 2019-2020 Flying 11s. New South Wales State Championships. The Australian designed Flying 11 is a high performance skiff which has been raced by kids and teenagers for over 50 years. 
Many of our current past Olympic sailors started their competitive sailing with Flying 11s, and I'm sure that a number of our flyers racing today will also end up going to the Olympics too. The Flying 11s are thriving, new boats are being built, and there is a resurgence of interest in the class. Currently, we have 59 registrations for round one, up more than 10% on this time last year. We've also got more girls than ever sailing. Last year, an all-girl crew won the nationals for the first time in the history of the Flying 11s. This year, we have 14 all-girl boats, and overall, girls represent about 40% of total registrations. We've had a great regatta here at Middle Harbour, getting in six races over the last two days. The stronger wins on day two upset a few of the early contenders, but overall leader, Jamie Stoddard and Ash Napper in Cool Running, has been consistent throughout round one, with three firsts and their worst race being only a fifth. They are in a commanding position. Amongst the all-girl crews, the race is even tighter. Rosie Sewell and Gemma Ashton in Oasis are leading this group and the 12th overall. But the 13th, 14th and 15th positions are all taken by all-girl crews. And with a drop allowed in the next race, this group will likely be joined by Basie Saunders and Taylor Duchard in Flying Lama during OCS Race 3. Encouragingly, we've also seen some great racing from some of the first-time skippers. In particular, Sam Stoddard with Corey Naper in the Muppets, lying 9th overall. Sophie Hart with Bella Dabola in Fanging, lying 13th, as well as 2nd amongst the all-girl boats. And Kai Rivers and Jacob West and Zephyr in 16th position. So lots to play for in Round 2, which will take place at the Hunters Hill Sailing Club on the 22nd and 23rd February 2020. Look forward to seeing you there. Well, it's December 4 at the CYC. It's all about to start to heavy up as far as the Royal Lake Sydney Hobart race is for this year. And we're with Bob Steele from Quest. And Bob, uh, once again, two times winner. Looking forward to it? Looking forward to it, mate. Um, don't know whether I'm going yet, though. Oh. Had a bit of a fall the other day. Tell me all about it. Well, I broke a rib and then... You know, I wasn't happy on the CV that I had one rib, so they told me I had three ribs broken. So I'm just thinking about what it's going to be like in the middle of Bass Strait this year. So I'm going to make a decision a little bit later on. Tell me what happened. Well, I was just on the back of the boat in the uh, Newcastle Bass Race and I just got flicked off the back and hit the life rafts. Busted a couple of ribs, so that was that. But that's okay, I'm all good, but um, the old back then started to play up, so we'll just, we'll figure that one out. We'll figure that one out and let everyone know. They'll be very disappointed if I don't go. You can imagine that, Geoffrey. Mate, I'll you look can forward, imagine that always look forward to seeing you at about two o'clock in the morning at the uh, Constitution well, Dock. I'll still be there. I'll, <laughs> I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be a lot smarter or probably better <laughs> off flying down, you know what I mean? Well, the crew reckon it'd be good if I flew down, the bastards. I'll, I'll see you on the plane. Yeah, OK. <laughs> so, uh, so you're going to suspend your ocean racing career? or? No, 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 no. I mean, you know, I'll just... I probably won't do those nasty, you know, the ones that are likely to be nasty. I mean, regattas will be fantastic, you know. Play hard, you know, sail hard during the day. You know, go and have a nice meal at night, get into a bed and do it all the next day for a few days. That sounds wonderful to me. And we're going to, in fact, do the Australia National Titles in Hobart just after the Sydney to Hobart Yacht Race on the first week of January yeah, down see. in Hobart Town, which will be exciting. And uh, then we'll take the boat to the Festival of Sales in Geelong. And we'll do the regatta there at the end of January. Then we're going to take it over to Adelaide and do the Adelaide to Port Lincoln and then the Port Lincoln regatta. Um, in February, I think it is. So we'll do all those, and then we'll bring the boat back, go to Port Stephens, and you know, consider what we're going to do from then on. I've mentioned previously we're quite keen on doing the New Mere race and the Groupma race, and then we'll do the Sydney to uh, Southport race, and probably go north as well. Um, and then the program will be to go to uh, over to New Zealand for the America's Cup. They're running a race out of out of Sydney to Auckland just a few weeks before the America's Cup, so 
That's might, what the Alfreds, yeah. Yeah, the Alfreds are doing that. And so we might join that one and uh, do that as well. And then we'd sort of have an aspiration that we might put the uh, yacht on a ship and take it over to LA and do the uh, Transpac race to Honolulu. Then I think I can pass away and you know, <laughs> hand the boat over to someone else who might like to sail a fabulous boat. Mate, it's been a great boat, hasn't it? Or it is uh, a great boat. Yeah, it is a good boat. I mean, it's amazing. It's The longevity of this boat is something really special because you know, I won the Hobart in this many years ago, in 2008 in fact, and then was we won it again, not under the name of Quest, but under the name of Balance in 2015. Um, then last year? And, and two years ago in 2017 we were second yeah. uh, on uh, IRC and first on ORCI. So you could probably say I've won two and three quarter Hobarts in this, <laughs> in this particular boat. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, you know, we had some, uh, the boys did particularly well on the weekend. We won the, uh, the Bird Island yacht race. So, uh, and beat a few of the good boats that were lining up for Hobart, but uh, that's all another story for another day, but uh, you know, she's still a very competitive boat. She's a far, isn't she? Far, yes, yeah, yeah. she's a far, far 52 TP, far designed boat, so it's always been a terrific boat. It still is a terrific boat. See the full interview on our website at boatson.tv.